met a gypsy. I think at the end, um, you know, in 2002, I was 31 years old, right? 2003, when I stopped racing, that was when the KTM thing happened. I was 32 years old. That's not not now, but when I raced, that was kind of an old, old, old guy, back in the day. right? So at that point, you're already trying to figure out, like, a, what's my exit going to look like, right? Yeah. Um, we already talked about it. I thought I was going to ride off in the sunset on a Yamaha. Didn't work. Um, you know, I win, I won three championships, then finished second in 2001, third in 2002. And then that's when, uh, Yamaha decided to go a different way. And I said, okay, well that's it. I'm going to reinvent myself. I'm going to show you guys. And that's when I made this deal with KTM. Well, it's just kind of a shame it didn't work out because knowing what KTM has done now yeah. is so impressive. I was just a little bit early and, th- and yeah. they were a little bit too ambitious maybe right about then. They had high hopes of doing something, but it just, the bike wasn't quite ready. And then they were going to build a bike for it and they canceled the plans to build a bike. And that's when I said, okay, I can't, I can't race this bike. Mm. It had no linkage. It was just not made for supercross. I already crashed in Europe a bunch on it. Um, dislocated my hip on it at the practice track. And I was like, you know what? I'm 32 years old. The guards already changed. Yeah. I'm, I don't have to prove myself anymore. I've done enough. I'm retiring. Yeah. And it, and it just clicked one day. That's it. I'm like, as, as bad as I felt for KTM, because they, again, like Suzuki did in 97, we're going to give me an opportunity to, to show myself and reinvent myself and do, and do all that and do yeah. it my way. And that was a really bold move on their part. Right. And it was, it was, it was crazy to, for them to think that, that, that it would all work out. And it was a little bit crazy on my part too. Right. But again, I was trying to do my own things, my own way. Um, so, you know, we did a couple, it was, I have to say it was a little strange, right? I signed with KTM, then I retired yeah. and then I did a, some parade laps on a KTM, which was death defying on that bike. Cause really, yeah, because I was having to ride a bike that wasn't made for supercross. And then, you know, a lot of the supercrosses back then, the whoops are right before the supercross. And then I'm expected to do a knack knack. Right. So I'm getting paid by <laughs> like KTM. To do it. I'm like, Holy shit. Yeah. This is a gnarly 30 seconds. Exactly. <laughs> and it was a little bit like a little bit like Wyndham doing those opening ceremonies yeah. with those big ass jumps. So well, for that, he yeah, did they for got a while away. until he crashed out like yeah. one to hurt himself or whatever. <laughs> yeah. and then that stopped. Um, but yeah, I mean, I survived that. And then immediately when that was, when that season was sort of over, it was like, okay, no deals. I don't want any deals. I immediately went out and bought some two strokes, bought a Suzuki, bought a Honda, bought a, another Yamaha two strokes, just cause I was like, you know what? I, I want to ride because I'm love to ride. And so I just want to try them all. This is the only time at this point I'll, I'll be able to ride all these bikes without people saying something about it yeah, or yeah. being tied to somebody, you know? So, um, that's kind of how that deal started working. Then I, Eric Kehoe obviously is a really good friend of mine. We raced together. He raced the era before me as the team manager of Honda. Those guys weren't riding so good. He's like, Hey, come out and help us out. Check it out. So I started doing some testing and that's when I raced again in 05 or something. Which was cool because I feel like that kind of gave you the send off. And then because you're on the two stroke, that's exactly how I felt. Yeah. It was just, it was a way better ending. Yeah. It felt right. Yeah. That one week, you know, I was doing all that testing. I raced a couple of races and then that one week I finished fourth in Phoenix on yeah. a 250 yeah. to the, to the big three at the time. Right. James, yeah. Ricky, Chad. And then the next week I finished fourth again on the 450. You ride the 450. Yeah. Right? So yeah. it was, it was just like, okay, cool. I can still ride. Everyone yeah. knows I could still ride. Yeah. And I did it on I'm, a two stroke. I'm good with that. Yeah. Last top five on Ex- a two stroke. Exactly. Last whole shot on a two stroke. Yeah. Um, and that, that for me was like, felt really good to get that opportunity, you know? Yeah. And, uh, from there it was just like, there was no brand ambassador job at the time. People didn't do what I was yeah. doing. I was, yeah. I made that role, started doing it and started doing all these fun events and, um, X games on the, you know, on the first Super step up, step supermoto. Up. Yeah, yeah. And I was just doing all these fun things. Yeah, you kind of got to retire at the perfect time when like that shit was still yeah. happening too. And you were the man yeah. on supermoto for yeah, a while. It was so yeah. fun. <laughs> yeah. Finish what second next games, um, also race supercross in X games. That's years right. later. Yeah, finish yeah, second yeah. to that. I think Josh Hansen won. I got second maybe. Yeah, springs a bell. Maybe um, Josh Grant was third in that or something like that. But anyway, it was 
it was just a really fun time. You could do these, you know, even Carmichael came out later and did step so, up yeah. and, um, yeah, I mean, it just, it was a good time to retire, a good time to be riding dirt bikes. Um, and it kind of gave you everything you wanted out of it. Totally. Yeah. And then, and then throughout that created a new fun position and that's valuable now to every manufacturer out there. And now I've been with Cowie. I mean, I started my career on Cowies. Yeah. I won my first supercross on a Cowie. I was team green for a couple of years there. And then when it came time to go to my pro career, um, they had other guys going to team green and I went to the pro circuit Honda team. So, um, in a way, when I signed with Cowie again, it, you know, monster was part of it. Yeah. It just all, everything made sense to go, go do something with Cowie and, and do this ambassadorship with Cowie. And <clears throat> I'll tell you what, man, it's been so fun. So, so many fun opportunities. We, I really enjoy the people at Cowie. Yeah. They're, they seem like a really it's awesome a fun bunch of people. group of people. Yeah. So I, I'm friends with Tucker that's like yep. test rides for, yeah. Yeah. So he's just one of my boys and because of him being at Cowie, like it's kind of bought me a little bit yeah, into, yeah. into Cowie. I'm like, fuck, these are good people, man. Yeah. Good people. Good. The bike's good now. Good atmosphere. Bike's killer. Um, been part of the side-by-side -side program with the KRX, you know, and my, my daughters are driving side-by-sides now and we, we take the KRX and we go race King of the Hammers and we do these crazy off-road events and stuff. And, and, uh, I'm just so, appreciative of the opportunity but we also have a lot of fun you know mm. there's a great group of guys over there um so yeah anything related to cowie that i do i just i have so much fun and i love it and appreciate it so much those guys are great yeah no it's just <clears throat> cool that you got to i guess like be a part of building the sport and then you kind of got to have like that kind of good it wasn't like the fairy tale ending but i feel like the way that it went down we probably got more of you than what we would have you know yeah i think maybe because like if imagine I if you won three more titles at honda and just what more money more everything that comes with it and yeah. then maybe you're just like i'm out yeah 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 maybe yeah not, i mean though. one thing that was never lost and i i just always wanted this to be this way in a career and i'm proud of the fact that one thing was never lost is my love for my dirt bike yeah you know and i love seeing the people like i can call anyone right now on any of these teams and they'll pick up my phone yeah because i'm friends with them yeah which which that way of the world went away after my career because there's agents and all this other stuff that happened now you yeah. know my mom and dad used to help me do my contracts and then i would go in the contracts with my cpa dave and um, you know, he did stuff with Ricky Johnson. He did stuff with Jeff Stanton. Um, those, that kind of era went away, you know, yeah. like I, I'm still pick up the phone and call Kehoe and talk to him. Hey, what's up, man? How you doing? And, and call all these guys. And, and, uh, I feel a little bit bad for the, some of the current writers that don't really have it that way. Yeah. You know, they have an agent, someone to talk for themselves. And I think it's <clears throat> as an ambassador, I think it's obviously really helped with that position. Right. But being able to speak for yourself is there's something to be said for that. Yeah. And some of that's a loss. Some of that's lost in a little bit of today's sporting. And it's not just moto. It's yeah. a lot of sports. Yeah. You know, um, I'm just, I'm just glad. And I'm just glad I grew up in the area I did. Yeah. It's always, you always think like, you know, Hey, the grass is greener on the other side and maybe I could have made more money. Maybe I could have yeah. done something differently, but I feel like I hit that sweet spot in the window and, uh, you know, I just still love riding my dirt bike. So that's the most important part. We are excited to announce the launch of our new membership site, gypsytales.com, packed with exclusive content and perks that you won't find anywhere else. This is your chance to become a part of the Gypsy Gang. And as a special bonus, if you sign up to an annual membership, you'll be entered into the draw to win our custom-built TC125, Gypsy Gang.